What's up YouTube, Ace Poker back with another video. For those that don't know, I'm 22 from New Jersey. For those that are here, I know you're sick of hearing that. We're back to the home game scene today. We've got two wins under our belt at the casino. Let's see if we can go three for three, get back to the home game. It's great action. This is the one with the runouts where they add $100. It just goes right to the flop, turn, river. So hopefully we can win a couple of those, win some money, and let's go three for three. Let's get right into it. Let's run good. We start off the session a bit of a comedic way as we raise pocket eights to $30 and get three callers. So we're looking to smash a board and win a good flop early. And I guess you could say this flop is below average. And I joke as everyone folds and the last player bets, I fold. Definitely not the board with pocket eights, but don't go anywhere because things are about to get crazy. This hand gets crazy right away as I wanted to experiment with something a little bit new in this game where players are not that good and like to call a lot pre-flop plus high rake. So when under the gun plus one raises it to $20, I 3-bet it next to act to $100. Normally you guys see my sizing is anywhere from $75, $80, $85, $90, but I just wanted to size up a little bit to just see what's going on. The player to my direct left decides to cold call $100 which is very concerning as you guys know, and it gets back to the original Razor who also calls $100. So now we're going three ways to a bloated flop and it comes five, two, six with just one speed. So not the board that I am looking for and when the original Razor decides to check, I think that they aren't really going to have many strong hands. The main concern for me is the player to my left who cold called the $100. I think that is going to consist of a lot of pocket sixes through pocket tens. I think jacks and up will three bet could also contain some ace king, ace queen, ace jack suited maybe, but I blocked that. So when the original razor checks, I decide to down C bet to $50. Yes, I bet $50 into $300. You guys see me do this with my really, really strong hands, so again, makes sense that I'm gonna do it with my not strong hands as well. Things get even crazier as both opponents call $50. So we're going to need a miracle, going to need to see a spade, king, or queen, and that's exactly what comes. We get bailed out the perfect card, the queen of diamonds, so it does not bring in the front door club draw, which was obviously a concern. The initial raiser decides to check and now I think that we definitely need to continue betting here. Like I said, my opponents can have anywhere from 6s through 10s. I think jacks and up will 3-bet. They certainly can have a flush draw here with any combination of a suited connector. So I did debate checking but definitely think that you need to bet here so I decide on a sizing of $120. Unfortunately or maybe not unfortunately because we don't know the river, both opponents give it some major thought and decide to fold. The player to my left told me that he had ace king which is certainly very weird like i said a very weird hand because he does not four bet pre-flop and he just floats my initial bet on the flop so definitely going to keep that in mind on how the player to my left plays like i said these players do some unorthodox things so let's navigate and keep on winning speaking of ace king it's now our time to win with ace king or at least hopefully so we're in under the gun plus one and we raise it up to twenty dollars and we get five callers of $20. This is not what you really want to see. So let's see if we can get to a good flop here. And we do. We see a flop of king six seven with two spades out there. We don't have a spade or a club. So definitely unblock all of the flush draws. Under the gun limps. And I decide to continue here for $40. Hopefully we do not get beat here or get raised. It'll be a gross spot. But the player to my direct left from the last hand who had ace king Decides to put in the call and he's the only caller so now things are a lot more calm and a lot more safer to navigate. Let's see a turn. The turn comes a two of clubs bringing in now two flush draws and like I said I want to do a lot of weird and unorthodox things here. Say I had a massive hand of 8-9 of clubs or 8-9 of spades. We would have a ton of outs and a ton of draws but would only have 7 high at the moment. So I want to do something that I would do with one of those massive draws. I'm going to bet massive here. If I'm going to bet massive with those draws, we might as well bet massive with a very good and slightly made hand already. 
So that's what I do. I decide to bet pot slash slightly over pot of $200 and unfortunately my opponent pretty much snap folds but I like the way that I played it here. I want to switch it up all the time. For those of you that watch the vlogs, usually I just decide to go for value, 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 little tiny bets on all the streets, try to suck out as much as I can but sometimes you want to experiment with different things. Let me know what you guys would have done here. A brief admiration of the chip stack. We are up roughly $400 and things are going swimmingly. Let's continue to run it up. For the next hand, we look down at King Queen again, this time off suit, and it folds to me all the way in the cutoff and I decide to just open it up to $20, probably thinking that just the blinds are going to fold. But the small blind makes the call for $20, so it looks like we're going to get some action. And once again, we see a really good board of queen, 5-8 with two hearts. The big blind checks. I decide to bet for $20 again, and the big blind makes the call. We see one of the biggest bricks in the deck, the two of spades on the turn. The big blind checks again. I think he's majority going to have a lot of heart flush draws here, maybe some gutters or open endeds with 6-7. So I continue for $35, and once again, he pretty quickly makes the call. We see another really good river with the queen. So we make three of a kind with the second best kicker. Don't really lose too much here, but to my surprise, my opponent just leads out for $100. Alright, I want to pause the video here for a second just to think about this because a lot of people had some opinions on this when I posted it on Twitter and I just want to give you my opinions here now that I've had time to think over the hand and just think over this action. So right away, I think that this is either a really good hand or absolutely nothing and 99% of the time it's going to be one of those two. My opponent is either just going to be bluffing here with missed hearts or really anything to just try to get me off maybe ace high or anything and he'll just not call a raise obviously if he doesn't have anything or my opponent has a really good hand. So let's think of the quote unquote really good hands that he could have here. He could have pocket twos and have just turned a set of that. He could have flopped a set of fives, a set of eights and he also could have all of the weaker queens such as queen jack, queen 10, possibly queen 9, maybe queen 7. I don't know how loose this opponent is. As you guys see in the top right, this is very early after sitting down today. So what would you guys do here? Considering out of the strong hands, we beat about half of them and lose to about half of them. And on the other hand, it could be a bluff and he won't call a raise at all. I look over at my opponent and he only has $200 left. So if that would influence your decision at all, it definitely would mine. If he had, say, $500 left, I would maybe just put in a min raise to see where I'm at, maybe raise it $150. And then if he were to rejam over that, I would obviously have to fold because that is just full house or nothing. But I just decide to put him all in and he snap calls and shows pocket eights. So I think just a disgusting cooler here, but I do personally think that you have to raise here. Yes, you could say, oh, what's going to call you? There's only a couple hands that, that you beat that are going to call you. But listen, my opponents are doing crazy things. This is a home game. I just said that somebody just cold called my $100 with ace king. They're doing all these weird different things. I think he definitely can have all of the weaker queens. Maybe he just thinks I'm bluffing and he'll just call with a pair of eights, a pair of fives, a pair of twos, pocket threes, pocket nines, pocket tens. Who knows what these people do? I think that you have to raise here and unfortunately we just get absolutely coolered and we are back to starting stack, back to rebuild time, but, but maybe a spoiler, we do, we rebuild plenty. So let's keep going and just keep on watching. All right, for the next hand, we have the best hand in poker. Just kidding. Pocket Jacks, one of the hardest hands to play in poker. You guys know it and love it. We raise it to $25 and only get one color. We see a pretty innocent looking flop in 965 rainbow. I decide to see bet for $25 and my opponent makes the call. We see an all right looking turn in the eight of clubs. Definitely does connect the board a lot more. Brings in a club flush draw. I decided to bet again for $25 and now my opponent pretty much instantly raises me to $200. Immediately I am not loving the situation at all and you guys know that I tend to only really get my money in really good. I don't think this is a spot to do that. I think my opponent definitely can have flopped a set, he could have turned two pair, he could have somehow turned a straight. 
He could have a massive combo draw, but we would only maybe be 60-40 against a massive combo draw. So I think about it for a little while and decide to fold. Like I said, no right way to play the Jiggities. And we're on to the next hand. All right, time for the hand of the night. Lock in, buckle your seatbelts. We look down at Pocket Queens, the third best starting hand in all of Texas Hold'em. We raise it up to $25 under the gun plus one and get one, two, three, four callers. Yes, that is the theme of the night and the theme of this game, which is why I always want to go bigger. I guess you can't really go much bigger than 5x preflop, but nonetheless, let's go to a flop prank for a good one, and it does not get better than that. Top set, rainbow board, what more can you ask for? Queen, nine, four, amazing, let's go. Under the gun checks, and now I check. Yes, you give a free card to some gut shots. Say 7, 8, 8, 10, jack 10 to be the most specific for an open ender. But you have to play sneaky sometimes, and you guys will see why. The action checks around, and I am relieved to see yet another brick. The two of clubs. And if things aren't already good, they get better. Under the gun leads out for $50. Yes, the standard play here is to raise. Sure, it's to raise. I decide to just call. Let's get more people in there. Sure, I'm pricing in flush draws. Still pricing in straight draws, but what more can I do? I decide to just call. You have to change it up. It works as the next player folds and the last player in the hand raises it up to $200. Oh my goodness, could this hand get any better? And now the initial player who bet out 50 goes all in for $200. This has been set up on a silver platter for me. It could not be set up any better. I back jam all in for $600. I push all my chips in the middle and I am praying that somehow my opponent has two pair and is drawing dead. Maybe he just has some kind of one pair holding and just doesn't believe me because my line is extremely weird. I raised preflop, I checked the flop, and then I just flat called this 50. There's no way I could have a strong hand here, right? Wrong. I have top set. The player looks extremely uncomfortable, and obviously for many right reasons he should. I have the best hand possible, so it's not possible for him to have a better hand than that. Maybe he's got pocket nines, who knows. Now it's time to just sit and pray for a call. Please make the call, please make the call. And eventually, he does put in the call. The river is quite possibly the worst one in the deck. In the jack of clubs, it completes straights, it completes flushes, every likely hand that my opponents definitely have, especially the one who raised. But I quickly show my pocket queens, and we are good. We scoop in a $1,600 or $1,700 pot. I don't know. I have to look back at the graphics. I'm not good at quick math like that. My opponent who raised and then called said he had pocket two, so my check got me paid an extra $600. Let's go. This is easily one of my favorite hands that I've ever played. Obviously, not really from a strategic wise or standpoint. I mean, yes, there was a little bit of strategy in the check and then just calling the 50, but other than that, everything was set up on a silver platter here. It's literally almost as if it was rigged and just everything happened for the right reason. The other player never showed his card, so I don't know what he had. I do believe that he had pocket twos. He never showed, he just told. I believe it. It makes a lot of sense. And let's go. I cannot believe how crazy this hand is. And as I flip to show, all my chips this is definitely one of my favorite chip piles ever obviously amazing for a thumbnail let's go we win we book it we are up now almost a thousand dollars let's keep rolling in the right direction and just another little bit of a spoiler we continue going in the right direction and we do not stop here like i said the train does not stop rolling as we look down at pocket aces the best starting hand in texas hold on we're in the small blind I'm hoping something happens, and something does indeed happen. It gets to the cutoff who opens to $50. Right, there's no action before him. We're playing 2-5, and he opens 10x, and I have aces. 
so obviously it's going to look extremely strong for me to 3-bet him when he just opens massive, but nonetheless, we have to anyways. So I make it 200, I do go pretty big here, because like I said, I think he has a really good hand, and he has about $600 in his stack, maybe we can commit him preflop, we'll see, I make it $200, and oh my goodness, the player to my left goes all in for his roughly, I think it was maybe 210 or a little bit less of like 190, Regardless, he's all in for basically that amount, and it gets back to the initial raiser. I'm praying he goes all in, and like I said, I think this is a pretty strong line. I think he's got a pretty strong hand, so let's see a flop, and let's see what he has. The flop comes queen, eight, two with two clubs, so all things considered, a really good board. There's not many hands here that he can have that beat me. Nonetheless, I think there's only really one option here. Like I said, he started with 600, so he's got $400 left. There's about $600 in the pot. So I just put him all in. I don't want to make any tough decisions. Looking back on it, I think I definitely should have bet small and then he would have definitely been committed on the turn. You never know. Hindsight is always 20-20. But he decides to fold and the player to my left turns to me and says, you want to run multiple boards? That obviously means he has a crappy hand. So I just say, sure, dude, whatever. I'm already up a ton of money. I prefer once, but you know what? I'm happy to do what anybody wants to do. So we run three boards and right away after the first board comes, he says, yeah, I think I got that one. And I'm like, okay, I don't know what he has. I mean, if I win two thirds here, I'll still make some money. It'll be annoying, but whatever. Then I flip over my aces and he starts looking, starts looking. And he goes, actually, I think you won all three boards. And he flips over eight, four suited. Yeah, eight four suited if you guys want to pause the video and actually see he briefly like flashes them to the camera when he's mucking them if this is not a great advertisement to come and play in these games wow i, I have the link below if you guys would like to come out to new jersey to play in these games feel free because this will happen and the other player decided to tell me that he had pocket tens so like I said, he definitely had a strong hand. He could have jammed preflop, he didn't, but wow, happy to win here. We are up another $400, and guess what? We are not stopping, we have more hands to come. Remember how I told you guys about the run out? This game does the run out. If you guys don't know, everybody puts in $25, and the house puts in $100. So if you've got a full table, this is like a $300 pot for just putting in $25. They run the flop, the turn, the river, and whoever wins just wins the whole thing. I mixed up two clips here because I got to the recording late. Right as I was stacking up my chips after the aces hand, I put in the 25 and I win the run out too. With a three, I hit trips. Oh my goodness, this session cannot keep getting any better. It feels like I just woke up on NFL Sunday late and I hit my damn long shot parlay. Let's get it. Thankfully, I avoid any more tough decisions with jacks as I raise them in the small blind and everyone folds. No damn right way to play this hand. The run good does not stop. We raise ace 10 suited to $25, pick up one call, and we flop two pair. Yes, it's not the technical nuts, but very good hand. I decide to see bet here, and as you see, my opponent snap calls me. So maybe a little bit to be worried here, but when the turn comes, a four of clubs, a very safe turn. I decide to bet again for $50, and yet again, my opponent snap calls. So I think I'm going to have to be worried a tiny bit and now the river completes the backdoor flush draw with the eight of clubs. So I think it over for a little while and I check with intentions to call but my opponent decides to snap check back. I show the ace 10 and it's good so we continue to run good. Maybe I should block bet the river to maybe 80 90 dollars and can easily fold if he raises. I think that's definitely a spot that I should know better on, but nonetheless, can't complain. We win the hand, and we are on to the next. Time for the last hand of the night, and arguably, although we've had some crazy hands, might be the craziest hand here. So there's a $10 straddle on, one call, and I decide to bump it up to $35. Yes, I should be making this $45, $50, $60 even, but I make it $35, and both players make the call, and I shit you not, the flop comes queen, eight, eight. <laughs> is this just like I had to rub my eyes I had to pinch my skin 
This is crazy. You guys are going to think that this is rigged with how I am running, but wow. I decide to check and the action checks around. What else am I going to do? But my luck might be running out or is it? I don't know. The turn comes in eight. So now any eight beats us and weird enough, the player who called the $10, not the straddle, decides to lead out for $100. It's the same player from before who I raised to $200 and he called preflop and he said he had pocket 10s. I don't know what he has here. I don't think there's any merit to raising. I'm just, I don't know what to do on this spot. So I just flat called $100 and the other player folds. We see a clean river, but it doesn't really matter what the river is. And my opponent decides to bet out $100 again. He has $400 left after this bet. What would you guys do? Would you guys raise all in because we beat a singular queen? Because a singular queen has queen, queen, eight, eight, eight. We have queen, 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 eight, eight. It's the higher three of a kind for those of you who don't know that. The only thing we lose to is a singular eight. I just, I don't know. It's either he's bluffing, he has the case queen, or he has the eight. I just, I don't know. I toss this spot around in my head a little bit and just very quickly decide to call and oh my goodness my opponent chose the case queen we could have easily got all of his money there's no way he's folding that how is he gonna put me on an eight? Oh, that one stings after we win a huge session and we win a huge pot here we easily could have gotten four hundred dollars that one literally pains me it pains me so much watching this back but i don't know like i said i think it's either a a bluff B, the case queen, which is highly unlikely, or the case eight, which is also highly unlikely. So I don't know. I just flicked in the call. Tell me what you guys would have done in this spot, especially after winning a massive amount all session. Do you really want to give it away for the little chance that he's got an eight? I don't know. It just really pains me to watch this one back. I'm curious to hear your feedback. And wow, this is going to wrap up a crazy session. Stay tuned to hear all my thoughts on the session and just how the past couple of weeks and month has gone for me. I appreciate all you guys and let's go to the outro. Just wow, what a session. Things have been going so bad that I had to take a little bit of a break from poker. I took three weeks off. My first session back, I won 800. My last session, I won 300. And tonight, we sun ran. We won $1,400 over four hours of play. I was looking down at premium after premium, trips, full, I hit a full house over a bigger somebody's full house when I had queens. It was queen eight eight. The turn was an eight. We had queens. The other guy had a queen. I, I was scared of the eight, so I didn't raise. We would have won more there. If we didn't get coolered on the pocket eights when we had trips, we would have been up 500 more, but just wow. Everything was going right. We were hitting two pair sets left and right. We had top set when somebody else turned bottom set. I mean, poker is so fun when it's like this. And it's so funny that I always want to show you guys my raw emotions and after the session where I had to take a break, if you guys go three vlogs ago, I think it was poker vlog 30 or 31. I was so down after that, sitting there talking like this, man, poker sucks. I literally captioned the, the video, poker sucks. And just, wow, I, I have such a passion for this. I love doing this, so it feels so good. It feels so right when sessions like this happen. I'm so blessed, you know, all praise to above. Uh, I'm a religious guy, but you know, just wow. Like, you know, you gotta be grateful on times like this and you gotta really soak these moments in because life as well as gambling is always up and down and you gotta manage those ups and downs and just anytime you're happy and having a good time, really soak it in because uh, you obviously know that it sucks when things go bad and you're sad and, and I'll never forget those feelings and I never quit. I took a little break, so I'm really happy. I'm really glad about that. Thank you guys so much for supporting me and I hope this video was fun to watch. I hope you guys enjoy watching me win. I know there's people out there who probably love to see me lose, but just wow, what a session. I just, wow, I can't wait to upload this. Thank you guys. Have a great day and peace out.